Hello, I'm Dr. Tom Allison. Uh, I am the co-director along with Dr. Todd Miller of the Sports Cardiology Clinic at the Mayo Clinic here in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the emerging discipline of sports cardiology. First, I'm going to start with a little personal history. Uh, as I was beginning my athletic career in high school, I was disqualified from the cross country team because of a heart murmur. Now fortunately I went to a physician who understood things pretty well and he determined that this was just a benign systolic ejection murmur and allowed me to participate. Well, 33 years later I'd uh, run hundreds of races including 26 marathons and even qualified for the U.S. Olympic trials in the marathon. Uh, my athletic career more or less defined me and probably was the reason that I ended up um, here at the Mayo Clinic in sports and exercise cardiology. So let me talk a little bit about why sports cardiology uh, is the emerging discipline that it is. Well, there's a lot of people in the U.S. today who are participating in sports. It's estimated that there are 35 million kids between the ages of 5 and 18 participating in organized sports. Another 450,000 college athletes. Now in terms of adults, there are 19 million adults who are running in road races and another 175,000 participating in triathlons. Now I'm not counting here adults that may be playing in volleyball leagues, basketball leagues, softball teams, uh, but, but just these endurance sports alone, I estimate that about 17 to 18 percent of the current U.S. population of 326 and a half million are regularly participating in sports. Now, you might say, isn't sports cardiology just cardiology? Can't the general cardiologist handle all of the sports questions? Well, given that many people playing sports, of course, the general cardiologist uh, or the specialist in some areas can certainly handle many of the problems, but uh, at, at high levels and in, and in many specific cases, there is an advantage to going to sports cardiology. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna make four points here. First of all, the sports cardiologist understands the risks and the underlying physiology of sports performance. I'll give you an example. Um, an athlete collapses, has a syncopal episode after completing a cross country race. Another athlete actually collapses during the cross country race. Two very, very different things with very, very different physiology and levels of risk. The next point is that the, almost all of the cardiac tests are different I might say abnormal, but it, but it really different is a better word in athletes than in non-athletes. Uh, for example, we had an ultra marathoner come here with an enlarged right ventricle on the echocardiogram. Now, in sports cardiology, we knew that this was very common, and in fact, his ventricle was more or less within the normal limits for an athlete. Others didn't realize that, uh, performed a, a right heart catheterization, did a right heart biopsy. Uh, in other words, was, were looking for pathology where there really was none. The third point is that the sports cardiologist understands, he knows, he or she knows the guidelines uh, for sports performance and knows their basis. For example, here at Mayo, uh, in our uh, long QT clinic run by Dr. Mike Ackerman, many patients with long QT syndromes are back to playing sports with appropriate therapy, such as beta blockade, uh, implanted defibrillator, uh, or sympathetic denervation. And finally, what's very important is to understand the patient. The motivations and the pressures are different in the athlete than they are in the person just seeking health. Performance, not health, is the athlete's primary goal. 
Now that doesn't mean that you have to agree with that goal, but in the mind of the athlete, that's, that's what comes first, performance. You also need to communicate effectively with the athlete. Uh, the athlete sort of takes things better from someone who's been there, who understands the demands of the sports, the demand of the training, uh, and the pressures that affect the athlete. Now, I'll give you one more example. We had a cross-country skier uh, who had exercise-induced atrial fibrillation. The atrial fibrillation came on only after 30 or 40 minutes of skiing, um, and the athlete was at very low risk for a stroke, uh, but the atrial fibrillation interfered with his athletic performance, and so we offered and the athlete accepted an AFib ablation and uh, now is participating again back at a high level. Certainly, uh, a non-athlete who had very limited AFib only during heavy physical activity would probably not be offered or accepted an ablation uh, for the atrial fibrillation. So, again, four important points, understanding the risks and the underlying physiology, reading the cardiac test appropriately, knowing the guidelines for sports participation, and understanding the motivation and pressures of the patient is what distinguishes the sports cardiologist from the general cardiologist. For more information or to schedule an appointment in sports cardiology, please see the information below. And thank you very much.